Special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tofu here bringing you eight another Minecraft World War II aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and doing the land diversion for the P-47G Thunderbolt. The Republic P-47 Thunderbolt is a World War II era fighter aircraft produced by the American Aerospace Company, Republic Aviation from 1941 through 1945. Its primary armament is eight 50 caliber machine guns, and in the fighter bomber ground attack role, it could carry five inch rockets or a bomb load of 2,500 pounds. When fully loaded, the P-47 weighed up to 8 tons, making it one of the heaviest fighters of the war. The Thunderbolt was effective as a short to medium range escort fighter in high altitude air to air combat and ground attack in both the European and Pacific theaters. The P-47 was designed around the powerful Pratt & Whitney R-2800 double wasp 18 cylinder radial engine, which also powered two US Navy slash Marine Corps fighters, the Grumman F6F Hellcat and the Vault F4U Corsair. An advanced two per turbo supercharger system ensured the aircraft's eventual dominance at high altitude while also influencing its size and design. The P-47 was one of the main United States Army Air Forces fighters of World War II and also served with other allied air forces, including those of France, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union. Mexican and Brazilian squadrons fighting alongside the USAAF also flew the P-47. The armored cockpit was relatively roomy and comfortable, and the bubble canopy introduced in the P-47D offered good visibility. Nicknamed the Jug, owing to its appearance if it stood on its nose, the P-47 was noted for its firepower, as well as its ability to resist battle damage and remain airworthy. A present-day U.S. ground attack aircraft, the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, takes its name from the P-47. So yeah, the uh, P-47 here, a very iconic World War II fighter. Uh, basically, the grandpa to what we know know as the A-10, kind of serving in a very similar role and kind of being that flying tank um, that the A-10 is so well known for. Uh, but a really nice aircraft and a really nice landed version to kind of expand upon our landed aircraft line of World War II uh, aircraft. This here is um, basically, again, designed to be landed at an angle. Um, in case you aren't aware, with a lot of World War II planes, it was very common for them to sit at angles when landed, um, especially still today with some single engine aircraft and uh, this right here is obviously one of those aircraft that would sit slightly angled. Um, so this is a nice addition, this is our second ever kind of landed World War II American aircraft, so well I, I guess you can say angled <laughs> World War II aircraft um, and we'll make an awesome addition to any of your basically airfields or anything like that as a nice little model to put on display. Uh, before we go ahead and move into the tutorial, I do want to go ahead and give a special links to Patreon supporter BrickBros2016 for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more your ideal, feel free to check out my Patreon page, link is always in my video descriptions, where you can pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a video record request to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel, it's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link will be in the video descriptions. With that though, let's go and dive in here to take a look at the P-47 Thunderbolt. So, going ahead and diving into it. Um, you can see we have obviously the front engine here with a little bit of a red outline around it. We have the invasion stripe on the wings, which I think is just very iconic for um, basically these aircraft. So I decided to go ahead and keep or add those uh, stripes on. And we also have the stripes here on the midsection as well. The National Star Insignia, the um, basically the aircraft unit there with the letters. Um, this is outfitted with the five inch rocket pods as well as a load of uh, 500 pound bombs, one on each wing. And then we obviously have the cockpit back here. This is a Razorback version, so it just comes straight back. And we have the tail here. Again, some of these evasion stripe markings with the white lines on the tail. And then we have the yellow rudder there. Uh, again, just for a little bit of extra color there in it and kind of representing a uh, you know particular squadron from World War II. Uh, but yeah, awesome looking aircraft. Again, this is the landed version. There is a tutorial currently out at the time of uh, this video going live for the in-flight version of the P-47 as well. So if you are wanting the in-flight version, there is a separate tutorial for that. Uh, but this here is going to be strictly covering how to make the uh, landed version of the aircraft. Anyways, without further ado, let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, so moving into our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and starting off with layer number one. If you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we'll be building the entire centerline of the aircraft, and then we'll be going ahead and building the right side on camera, and it'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side in between layers. This aircraft, for the most part, is completely symmetrical. There's one tiny thing that is different uh, on the two sides, and once we get to that point, I will talk about that a little bit more in detail. But just plan uh, for the entire aircraft being basically the same on both sides. 
and all that. Anyways, our first layer here is going to basically involve us kind of getting the wheelbase set up and kind of building from there. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down two stone top subs and we want to place down an iron trap door come off the stone top sub. So we're going to have our aircraft face that way. So we're going to have an iron trap door this way and then two going toward which would be the back of the aircraft. So that way. And that'll be right there if that. We're going to go then go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine blocks. We're going to place down a wither skeleton skull on the ground. And then at this point right here, depending on what game version you're on, uh, there's a couple different options for what you can do here. If you are on, not on Java, we can go ahead and place a birchwood fence gate here and open it toward that um, wither skeleton skull. However, if you are on Java, we can go ahead and use a different technique. This is going to involve us using the give command. So slash give space at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And this right here is just your command. By pressing enter, you'll get this glowing stick. What we can do here is we can go ahead and this space right here, kind of coming off this wither skeleton skull toward the aircraft. We're going to go ahead and place down a block here, and we're going to place down a lever on the side of it. We're going to use our debug stick to go ahead and change the facing. So we're going to left click while crouching to selected facing. By right clicking now, again still crouched, we can rotate it until it basically connects to the back, or somewhat connects to that wither skeleton skull like so. Then we can delete these blocks and you have that lever basically floating right there. Really nice way to make that connection uh, from the rear wheel up to into the aircraft. So just a nice little technique to use there. Um, you can obviously go ahead and use the other method if you do not have a debug stick, such as those on Bedrock or Pocket Edition. Anyways, at this point now, we're going to then go to the stone top side here and count out one, two, three, four, five blocks out to the sides. So we're going to count out one, two, three, four, five. We're going to go then place down one and two polished black stone walls. And we can go ahead and then delete those blocks like that up to the sides. After that's all done, you'll take the same thing, do it on the air side, and this is what you should have for your wheelbase and basically the base here of the, view of the aircraft for your first layer, layer number one. With that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to get started with here, we're going to place down a nice stone slab on top of this iron trapdoor in the front here, followed by a stone full block behind that. For us on Java, we're going to go ahead and place down a piston right here. If you're not on Java, I would recommend probably placing down a stone stair instead. After that, however, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair like so. Then going back from the stone brick stair, we're going to place down one, two, and three iron trap doors. Coming off these iron trap doors to the side, we're going to place down three more out to the side like so. Then coming off the center iron trap door, we're going to place down a stone top slab, a quartz top slab, a polished black stone top slab, quartz top slab, a uh, polished black stone slab, and a quartz top slab. Like that, going back. After that, over above this lever, we're going to place down a stone upside down stair, like so then two iron trap doors going back from that stair. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves birchwood signs and on the side of the stair and this iron trap door we're going to place down two birchwood signs like so along the sides there. After that's all done we lastly just want to go ahead and grab some stone stairs. We're going to go, ahead and go to these polished black stone walls and we're just going to place down two stone stairs back to back on top of those walls. And with that all complete right there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer two. And with that, let's move on to layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a stone full block above this piston or stair, whichever you uh, placed here before. And we're going to go ahead then place down a stone top slab going forward. Then going back from the stone block, we're going to place down an additional one, two, three, four blocks back, followed by a green terracotta block, then one uh, quartz block, then a black concrete block, and our uh, white concrete block, an air black concrete, and then an air white concrete block like that on the end. We're going to then place down a green terracotta block, then one, two, three stone blocks, and then a birchwood up down stair like so. After that's done, we're going to then go to the side here of these two stone blocks. We're going to place down two stone top slabs, then a row of one, two, three going back, and we're also going to place down a skeleton skull on the side of this slab here. We then want to place down a row of two is smooth quartz top slabs, with a skeleton skull coming off the side facing toward the front, then an air two stone top slabs, and then one right here to the side there, like that. After that's all done, we're going to go then place down a light gray stained glass pane here, followed by a green stained glass pane, then a white stained glass pane, polished black stone wall, diorite wall, and then a uh, another polished black stone wall, and then another diorite wall, and then a mossy cobblestone wall. Coming off the mossy cobblestone wall, we're going to place down a zombie head, and then coming off the uh, diorite wall, we're going to place down a birchwood sign. After this, we want to go and then grab our stone uh, full blocks, and we're going to place down three stone blocks going forward. One, two, three. We're going to go and then place down a stone upside down stair, and then a polished andesite upside down stair after that. 
Then an iron trap door come off the side of that stone top slab. Come off the uh, polished janisate stair, we're gonna place down an iron trap door. And we're gonna then take our stone top slabs and go back one, two, three, four. We're also gonna place down one and two iron trap doors here, and then one, two, three, smooth quartz top slabs. After that, we're gonna take our polished blackstone, place down one, two, three, and then a dark oak trap door, come off the side of that iron trap door. After that, uh, we want to then place down two andesite walls on top of those two stairs like so. And then grabbing our uh, dark prismarine, we're going to place down two dark prismarine top slabs like that. One going toward the back there. And we're going to then also grab ourselves an item frame. As well as a black concrete block. We're going to place down an item frame here, black concrete. And if you're on Java, we'll place a dark liquid sign over that as well. You will not be able to place a, place a dark liquid sign if you are on a version other than Java. So just keep that in mind. We're going to go then place down one and two dark prismarine top slabs forward. An item frame, black concrete, and a dark oak sign on the side of that, um, that uh, slab. Then on this side here, we're going to place down two dark oak signs and then one right there on the back. We then want to go ahead and grab some green terracotta. We're going to place down a green terracotta block coming off this third from front for this middle uh, dark prismarine top slab and then one more green terracotta block back. A zombie head coming off that, that side toward the front, a mossy cobblestone wall going toward the back, and then a dark oak with trap door coming off this wall, like so. After that, we want to go and then take our birchwood buttons. We're going to place down one birchwood button on the side here and one below it, like that, to go ahead and make your bombs there on the outer sides. With that all complete, that is going to basically wrap up everything we have there for layer 3. Here's what it should look like for the top-down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number 4. Before we go ahead and jump into layer 4 entirely, I do want to mention also for us Java players, this piston down here on the bottom, we can go ahead and right click for debug stick and we can actually get rid of that wood portion on top there which kind of helps with the shaping there for this uh, tank. And one thing also uh, is we do want to go ahead and place down skeleton skulls on the sides here of those blocks and that will be done for both versions and you will have to readjust your piston there again as it will uh, activate and just make sure that you have those that block a stone block still filled in as sometimes it will get deleted when the piston does um, get reactivated so um, it should look like this here for this section here anyways after we get uh, that all out of the way we can go ahead and get started with our next layer for this we're going to start off by going ahead and going to the stone top side we're going to place down a green terracotta block here and then we're going to go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 green terracotta blocks back so in total here you should have a row of 16 on the end here on top of that up sound stair, we're going to place down a yellow concrete block. Then going to the front, we're going to place down a stone block, a piston, upside down if you're on Java. If you're on a Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would recommend placing down a upside down stone stair. Then a stone top slab, and then our acacia wood trap door there on the very end. To the sides, we're going to place down an iron trap door coming off this slab here. Then a skeleton skull coming off that piston, and then a stone upside down stair. We're going to go ahead and then take our green terracotta, go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Green terracotta blocks, a white concrete block, polished black stone wall, one, two, three, four, green stained glass paints back. Then on our horizontal stabilizers, we're going to place down two green carpet, then three green carpet, two white carpet, two green carpet, and one green carpet like so. Now we get into our wings. Our wings here are going to start with, with a dark oak would stair on top of this iron trap door. Then one, two, green terracotta blocks back. Then another dark oak would stair. And then we're going to follow this up with a daylight detector, like so. After that, we want to go and then place down a quartz stair here. White concrete. And then going back from that, we're going to go and place down um, one and two quartz slabs. And then a white carpet here on the very end. Then our next row is going to be a, a row of polished black stone stair here next to this one then a black concrete block back two polished black stone slabs back and then we want to place down a black carpet on top of that top slab there our next uh, row is going to be a quartz uh, top slab to go ahead and begin with so we're going to place down a quartz top slab this is going to be followed up with a quartz upside down stair then a quartz full block or I should say actually a concrete uh, full block, a quartz slab, and then we're going to place down a uh, skeleton skull coming off that quartz slab, like so. And we can actually do something like this, which will actually sit a little bit better. So we'll just place down a skeleton skull like that. Anyways, after that's all done, uh, we're going to go and grab our polished black stone walls, and we're going to continue on by placing down a row of one and two 
up and down stairs like so. Then going back from this, a black concrete block, and then a polished black stone slab. And then we're just going to go and grab our wither skeleton skull, and we're just going to place down one on top of this block like that. After that, uh, we're going to go ahead and then continue on by placing down a hopper. That'll be on top of this right here. And also a hopper that'll be on the back here like so. In between the hoppers, we're going to place down a quartz top slab. And then one quartz top slab also going back like so. Um, after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then grab our andesite walls. We want to go ahead and place down one, two, and three andesite walls like so. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a stone top slab. Going back, so like that. We're going to go then grab our iron trap doors. We're going to place down an iron trap door to the side here. A stone top slab. Then an iron trap door again. We're going to go then place down three iron trap doors. Then two. And then one. Turn off this one like that. And after that's all done, this is what it should look like for the top down view uh, once you have that all complete. And that right there will conclude everything we have for layer number four. And, uh, with that, uh, we will be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we moved into layer five. For layer five, to be human, we're going to place down an iron bar on top of this uh, acacia wood trap door. Then we're going to go ahead and place down uh, two black concrete blocks back, three green terracotta blocks, then two black concrete, two black stainless blocks, then one, two, three, four green terracotta, a piston, a dark liquid slab, and then we want to go and then skip a space, place down a light gray, yeah, light green stainless pane. Um, or just green stainless paint, two green terracotta blocks, and then a um, sandstone wall there on the back. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and start our way up to the sides. So we're going to place down a red nether brick wall here to the side, a green terracotta block, a green circle box like this to the side, and on the side of that circle box, we're going to place down a dark liquid sign. We're going to go then place down one, two, three, four, five green terracotta blocks back, a dark liquid stair, a dark liquid slab, one, two, Mossy cobblestone walls, two green stingless panes, and then a zombie head right there coming off that piston. Now at this point, we can take our debug stick. We can go ahead and go to this piston, right click it, and go ahead and get rid of that top portion. And same thing down here for the bottom here. We can do the same thing for that piston there on the bottom. With that all complete right there, that's going to pretty much wrap up that. And we'll go ahead and continue uh, by working our way into the wings. So for our wings here, we're going to go ahead and place down a iron trap door on top of this slab here. Then two dark oak trap doors. We're going to go then place down a daylight detector right here. Turn that to night mode. And then an iron trap door back from it. We also want to place down a uh, carpet, a white carpet on top of that hopper, like so, to hide it. After that, we're going to place down another daylight detector here to the side. Then a dark oak trap door. And after that, we're going to go and then go back with our green carpet. Total of two. We then want to place down. Two daylight detectors like so, then a green carpet, and then we're going to place down a dark liquid slab, like so, and then a daylight detector. We're going to go then place down two dark liquid slabs like this, and then one right here, and then also a green carpet on this iron trap door, like that. After that's all done, we're going to then go to this space right here, we're going to place down a zombie head at about a 45 degree angle, so like so, and that right there will pretty much finish that off right there. Now at this point, I would build both sides of the aircraft. Um, basically get both sides basically equivalent to what we have going on right here. And we would want to go ahead and after we have both sides basically complete, we're going to place down a end rod. There are two end rods coming off this dark liquid slab. And that's going to be on the left side and the left side only. Also, in addition, on the back here on these two green terracotta blocks, we're going to place down two birchwood buttons along the sides there as well. And after that is all complete, um, the last thing we really have here is going to be the banners. So... For the banners, um, the lettered banners here, I'm not going to show you guys how to make. Um, you can kind of find tutorials all over YouTube about how to make the various banners depending on what game version you're in. And for us, we're going to be going ahead and just using U and N. I mean, it's just some random numbers I had or letters I had on the world on hand. Um, you guys can obviously use whatever you guys prefer. But yeah, we're just going to use U N, and we're going to place these on the monster cobblestone walls right here, right after the cockpit. So you have the U and N, so it reads left to right, U N, and over here, left to right, U N. Now at this point though, I will grab the materials and I will show you guys how to make these banners right here, the striped and this is the star banner for the National Star Insignia. So let me go ahead and grab the materials and we'll get started with that. Alright guys, so moving in to make these banners, they're pretty simple to make. To make them, we're going to start off by going ahead and placing down a loom. We're going to go ahead and go into our loom, and we're going to place down our black banner. And for our materials here, we will need a black banner, blue dye, or sorry, a blue banner. 
three white die, one green die, four blue die, and the banner pattern that's going to be the flower charge. We're going to start off with this black banner, we're going to place our green die in and then do a line horizontally across the top with green die. We're going to place this banner back into the loom, place our white die, and we're going to go then select the line that goes right through the center there to go ahead and make this banner here. This will be our first banner and we're going to go ahead and hold on to that. Alright guys, so at this point for the star banner, you actually need a white banner, two white die, and four blue die as well as that banner pattern. So uh, my apologies, I was to grab the wrong banner. Uh, but basically for this, we're going to place down this banner into our loom and our blue die. We're going to go and do that stripe that goes through the center like so for blue die. We then want to go ahead and place our white die in with our banner pattern. And we're going to create something that looks just like this. This banner will be placed back into the loom when we remove our white die and our uh, banner pattern. We're going to place down our blue die back in, do the line horizontally across the top, place it back into our loom, remove our die, switch to white die, and then we're going to go and then do the diamond in the center of the banner, like so. And then we're going to go and place down a blue die into our loom, we're going to go and do the triangle that comes up from the bottom, like so. And then the line that goes horizontally across the bottom, like that of our blue die. And this right here will create this blue banner with the white star. This banner here, very, very simply, is going to be, or to place these banners, uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, we're going to go ahead and begin with by placing down the black banner, or the first black banner striped banner right here on that glass pane. We're going to drop down to a star banner, and then this banner right behind it. So you get something that kind of looks like that there for your national star insignia, like that on both sides for the aircraft. After you have that all done, that's it for our banners, and with that we'll move on to our next layer. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six to go ahead and get started with, you're going to place down a black concrete block on top of this one here from the previous layer. We're going to go then place down two inside walls going forward, and then a skeleton skull come off that last wall there in the front. We're going to go back from the black concrete, one, two, three, four green terracotta blocks, then one, two, three black stained glass blocks, two green terracotta blocks, followed by a piston, like so, and then a dark liquid stair, like so. Going back from the dark liquid stair, we're going to place down a row of five of barrier blocks. After the barrier blocks, we're going to place down two white concrete blocks, and then a white stained glass pane there in the end. We then want to go ahead and go to the... Uh, second and third barrier blocks from last. I'm going to place down two stone buttons there along the sides. Um, after that's done, uh, we're going to go and then work our way out to the side by placing down a iron bar on the side of this wall here. Then a case wood trap door coming off of it like so. We're going to place down there a green terracotta block back, a dark oakwood trap door here, a green shulker box on top of that, and a dark oakwood sign on the side of that block. We're going to place down there a green terracotta block back, two dark oakwood stairs, a dark oakwood slab, two black stained glass panes, two green stained glass panes, and then a zombie head come off the side there of that piston, like so. At this point in time, we'll use our debug stick to go ahead and right-click this piston and get rid of that top portion of it, like so. And once we have that all done right there, that is going to conclude everything for layer number six. And here's, again, an overview of what it should look like so far. And with that, we'll be moving into layer number seven. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and actually move into our final layers here, which will be layers 7 and 8. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to place down an iron bar on top of this um, andesite wall right here. And then we're going to then place down a black concrete block back from that. We're going to go then place down two pistons, like so, if you're on a different version of Minecraft, a green terracotta block and then a dark oakwood slab would also work instead. After those two blocks there, we're going to place down two dark oakwood slabs, a narrow brick stair, a black, er, a black stained glass block, a narrow brick slab, and a daylight detector back. We're going to go then go to the sides, place down a red nether brick st stair on top of that iron bar there. On top of that iron bar, we're going to place down a uh, red carpet. And then going back from this red nether brick stair, we're going to place down a dark oak with stair. And then we're going to place down a green carpet on top of that black concrete block. We then want to place down two zombie heads on the sides of those pistons like so. And again, for us Java players, we'll go ahead and use our debug stick here to right click them and get rid of that, or get rid of that top portion of them. We're going to go then place down two... Uh, Wither Skeleton Skulls on the side of this glass block and this stair, like that. After that, we're going to then place down a dark oak fence post on top of this dark oak stair. And then going back from the fence post, we're going to place down one, two, and three uh, uh, barrier blocks. We're going to place down a snow button on top of this barrier block here, this first one. And then stone buttons on the sides here of these two here. Then we're going to place down two stone buttons on top of these last two barrier blocks like that. And then we want to go ahead and place down two dark oak stairs on top of those white concrete blocks like that. And after you have that all done, that's going to pretty much wrap up what we have here for this tutorial. Uh, we're going to then place down also a dark ugly button on top of this block right here. And now we'll go ahead and move on to the props. Uh, I do apologize for that. My dog got a hold of his uh, squeaky toy and started going crazy. Now one thing I did notice also is that these iron trap doors do open with, with the um, daylight detectors on top there. 
good alternative for this is to either go ahead and take a debug stick and go ahead and left click that until you get selected open true and we'll go ahead and right click those closed like that to go ahead and close those trap doors you can also use uh, a birchwood trap door instead in replacement of um, said iron trap doors anyways though at this point in time we're going to now move on to the propellers so for the propellers here pretty uh, straightforward what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and place down a polished black steel wall going up at angles from those stairs and the walls down here like that we're going to then go up again at an angle going up and going down like this same thing here going down and going up like that like so and we're going to go then take these walls here and we're going to go ahead and bring the walls on the bottom forward and the walls up on top here we're going to bring those back we then want to go ahead and go up from these we're going to go ahead and go up at an angle and these ones right here we're going to go down and out to, to the side there at an angle and anyways continuing on we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing over on the other side as well so these will just come out to the side and coming down here same thing like that and that'll basically form your propellers like so for the aircraft and with that that's going to wrap up my tutorial here for the p47g thunderbolt hope you guys do enjoy this aircraft and are able to put it to good use if you do use this build i do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it this being from the sound of the build to my channel or this video if it does a premium social media sites as long as you guys give me proper credit for the build you're free for a project you guys are working on uh, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Brick Bros 2016 for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. However, with that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett 2 <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.